Hey gang, I have a new topic for you and it's kind of fun when you get to see it in action. Uh, it's called parametrics and it's also a good introduction to some of the things that you'll be doing in calculus. Um, so as you can see, there's a little hummingbird there and their wings move super fast. But when their wings are moving super fast, they only move like hovering like a helicopter up and down, uh, not quite as fast uh, as their wings are beating. So, and they can go up or down or sideways or however they wanna do. And um, then there's also things going on around them like the wind is blowing and um, there's other bugs around, flying around and everything has its own rate of motion. And so that's what parametrics is all about, is talking about um, time just keeps on going. Time just carries on and just steady beat while all these other crazy things are happening around you. Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about. And so here we go, we're just doing an easy, a ball is being thrown in the air. Well, when a ball is thrown in the air, there's a lot of things happening, which if you've taken physics, you understand that um, there's wind resistance, there's uh, forces going on in all kinds of directions. But all we are gonna look at is the height of the ball and the distance of the ball uh, in relation to time. So like when we're gonna look at this first graph, so all these three graphs are related to this one ball being thrown. Um, and we're gonna put them all together so that we can just look at one graph. Uh, so the first graph is, it's a vertical distance, meaning the height. And I am gonna call this one Y, because usually up and down is Y. So I'm gonna call this first graph Y. And if you look at this graph, at one second, so the time is at the bottom, at one second it's about 62 uh, meters high. And at two seconds, it's coming back down and it's about 60 meters high. And at three seconds, it's about 25, 30 meters high. Then we have uh, the horizontal distance, which is how far it travels. And at one second, it is 40, at two seconds it's 80, at three seconds it's 120. So the uh, two graphs here, both are using one, two, three, four seconds, but they're both measuring different things. So the third graph puts it all together and that's called the parametric curve. That's taking um, one measurement in relation to time and then another measurement in relation to time and putting it all together. So let me show you what that does in a little table here. So for T, we're using zero, one, two, three seconds. And we're gonna compare it to the two other graphs. So the X graph, the horizontal distance, I'm gonna fill in what the measurement was for time in each of those distances in each of those uh, instances. So at zero, it was zero. At one, it was 40. At two, it was 80. And at three, it was 120. And that's how far away it was from the position, which the original position was zero. Uh, uh, talking about the height in the vertical distance, the Y graph, we're gonna put those uh, measurements. So at zero seconds, it started at 40 meters high. At one second, it was about 62. And at two seconds, it was about 60. And at three seconds, it's about 28. So these points right here are being put together as XY points on a new graph with the horizontal distance and the vertical distance. So at 
this point 0, 040. 0, 040 is when time is 0. When time is 1, we have the point 4062, approximately. When the time is 2, it's about 80, 60. It's about 80 distance, uh, distance away and 60 meters high. And then the last one is 120, approximately 120 and 28. So what we are doing, these are the actual parametric equations for the two graphs, the X graph and the Y graph. And what we did is put them together in a single, and it's called a rectangular equation without the T. Um, but each point is in relation to time at that point, the same time. So that's what uh, the purpose of this is. What's going on if I had to stop things where they were? Where is the ball? How high is it? And how far is it at this point in time? And we do this for a lot of different things. A couple of examples. But first, I'll go ahead and give you the definition. F and G are continuous functions. And so the F function goes with X and the G function goes with Y. And they, we plug the T for time into each function to get a new set of ordered pairs that makes a new parametric curve relating each of these two functions to the same time. And so what we're going to do is, instead of looking at graphs, we're going to use some functions, but we're still going to plug them into a table. And it's over an interval, and here's the interval right here. And instead of using every single number in that time interval, I'm just going to ask for five. So we're out, and this is called the table. Okay, table method. Okay, so the table method is you have a T column, and we're going to split that interval up into negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. Five numbers is plenty. Uh, then we have X and Y, and then we're going to see what kind of curve they make. So we're going to find our new X, Y points by plugging in T into both of the functions. So I'm first going to plug in negative 4 into the x function for t. And so that means that's negative 4 squared, which is 16 plus 5. That's 21. When I plug in negative 2 for t in the x function, I get 4 plus 5 is 9. When I plug in 0 for t, that's just 5. When I plug 2 back in, I get 9 again, and then when I plug 4 back in, 4 in, I get 21 again. And you can see why I chose these points. Um, now we're going to go to the y function. I am going to plug in all these t's, not the x's, but the t's, into the y function for t. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Then I plug in negative 2. Divided by 2 is negative 1, plus 4 is 3. I plug in 0 and I get 4, and I think you see the pattern. 2 divided by 2 is 1, plus 4 is 5, and when I plug in 4, divided by 2 is 2, plus 4 is 6. And so there are your points. So here are your new points right here, x and y. We're just going to graph those points. Plugged in T to both functions, got some new numbers, got some new points. So uh, since the X goes up to 21, I'm going to go by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20. And the other numbers I can just go by 1s. The Y's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to plot, plot the new X and Y points to get my parametric function. So I go 21, 2, uh, 9, 3, 5, 4. Now be careful not to use the T's. Don't use the T's. 
use your x and y. Uh, then we've got, we're going back for 9, 5, and 21, 6. And you can see that we have a parabola, which you are going to have to name the shapes that you get. And they're going to be pretty easy, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, let's go ahead and do the next one so you can see another type of function. Uh, so I got my t's. And I'm going from 0 to 8, and like I said, you don't have to do every single number, but 5 is a good amount, so 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And now I'm going to plug in these t's into the x function. So 0 times 3 is 0, 2 times 3 is 6, 4 times 3 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, and 8 times 3 is 24. So there's my first set. And now I'm going to do my y's. I'm going to plug in the t's into the y function. Now I'm going to get some decimals here, and I'm just going to give them to you. But be careful. Make sure you don't uh, mistakenly plug in the x's into that function. You're plugging in t's. So 0, well, that's easy. That's 6. Square root of 2 plus 6 is 7.4. Uh, square root of 4 is 2 plus 6 is 8. Square root of 6 plus 6 is 8.4. Okay. And square root of 8 plus 6 is 8.8. .8. All right, so again, we are going to graph this. And since all my x's are multiples of 6, I'm going to go by 6's. 6, 12, 18, 24. And since those numbers are pretty close together, I'm going to go by ones again. And I'm going to plot them. And remember to only plot the x's and y's. We're done with the t's. So 0, 6 is my first one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right there. Then 6, 7.4, and then right there. Then 12, 8. Then 18, 8.4, and 24, 8.8. .8. So this curve goes like this. And this curve happens to be a square root curve. Now, your original functions should help you determine the name of your function. Uh, it's like eye color traits. There's a dominant color. I think brown is probably the dominant eye color. Um, you guys know that from biology, right? Right. Okay. So the dominant function, so like example one, you had a linear function and a quadratic, and it turned out to be a quadratic. Example two, you had a linear function and a square root function. The dominant function is the curve. So the curve seems to be the dominant function, but you still want to judge and see. If you have two lines, you're going to get a line. Um, I am not going to do example three because I think that um, I've done enough examples here. If you need more, we can do more later. I am going to go to the slide because um, I don't want to take up too much more time. And we need to do the elimination method. So this is called elimination. So we are, um, for this method, what we are doing is finding the rectangular form. The rectangular form only has x and y. So we are basically eliminating the parameter, which might be in your directions at some point, the parameter, um, t. So we are eliminating t to get the rectangular form, to put these two parametric equations together without the t. And uh, we did that in the last, um, the last slide, but you just didn't see it. And like I said, we, when we plotted it, we only plotted x and y, and we were done with the t. So that's what we're doing here, but we're doing it in a different way. Um, so the first step for our eliminating the parameter is to solve 
take one equation for two. Once you have that equation solved, you're going to substitute, kind of like um, systems of equations, substitute into the other equation. And solve for y. You want to solve for y because then you can graph it in your graphing calculator. It's easier to graph that way so you can see what kind of shape you have. Because we still are going to have to name what the new shape is. Uh, so for the first one, the first step, pretty easy. I am going to solve for t in this equation because that t is the easiest to solve for. I don't want to use a quadratic because then I will have to take the square root. So I'm, when you solve, when you pick your equation, pick the easier one. So when I solve for t, t is going to equal x over negative 3. Then step 2, I'm going to plug that into that t. And so that will be y equals negative x over 3 squared plus 2. And I can tell you what kind of function that is without even graphing it. It's a quadratic. So you can take a quadratic or parabola. The shape or the function is fine. So I already know it's going to be a parabola because it's a quadratic. Um, and that's all you have to tell me. Unless you have to graph or something. All right, so example two. I am going to go ahead and do this one as well because... In this one, if I solve for x, I'll have to take the square root. So I think I'm going to solve this one for t. So t equals y over 4. And then plug that in here. So x equals y over 4 squared minus 5. Now, hmm... I might have done it the other way because now I have to solve for y. And so I just wanted to show you, you can do it either way, but now I'm going to have to do a couple of extra steps, which is not too bad. Uh, I'm going to have to do x plus 5 because I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And notice I am not squaring that because I'm just going to do the opposite, which would be the square root. So now I'm going to take the square root to get rid of that square. So I have the square root of x minus 5 equals y over 4, and then I'm going to multiply by 4. So y equals 4 times the square root of x minus 5. And it would be that way. Oh, plus 5, my bad. Thanks for pointing that out, whoever pointed it out. That should be adding it to both sides. Um, but it will come out the same either way you solve it. Whether you solve the first one for t or the second one for t, it's going to come out the same because you have to solve for y. I'm going to go ahead and do this last one. This one is kind of a bonus one. I probably won't give you one like this. Um, but since I'm not doing the bonus on the next slide, I'm going to do this one. Uh, so when I solve this one for t, I'm going to solve for this t. So I don't know if you remember. Hopefully it will work. I don't know if you remember, but I said that you can switch these two. It's um, a shortcut. Otherwise, you would have to um, solve the proportion, and it would come out the same. So I have the square root of t equals 1 over x, and I'm going to square both sides. So that I have t equals 1 over x squared, because I distribute that. And now I'm going to plug this into both t's. So that is kind of a complicated problem there. And that's why we do complex fractions. I have 1 over x squared plus 1 over 1 over x squared. And we did this section. It's really not too, too bad. Because once you realize that if I do the top first 
and I do turn that 1 into x squared over x squared, then that equals 1 plus x squared over x squared all over 1 over x squared. I know this is kind of complicated, believe me, I won't give you one of these type of problems, but it's good to know your fractions and your rules and how to solve these, so uh, just bear with me. And because now these eliminate, and you end up with one y equals 1 plus x squared. Okay. Okay, so like I said, I'm not going to give you one that tough. But if you want to challenge yourself, you should try it. Um, I am going to go to the next slide. And I'm just going to talk about it. I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to make you guys do this. It's going backwards. Uh, again, it's really good to have this kind of outside the box thinking for calculus. Um, and it's going backwards. It's giving you a... Um, uh, the first one gives you this... One, oh, it's, this is supposed to be an X. That's my bad. It gives you a rectangular function, and both of these are, give you rectangular functions and want you to split it into two parametric functions. Um, but like I said, we're not going to do that. What you are going to do is some homework, just some practice problems. It's about eight problems. And you're also going to do um, a little activity. Instead of a quiz on this, you're just going to do uh, a Desmos activity. And that will be tomorrow. Um, and before the activity, so for the last two problems of the practice problems, there is um, a section that I'm going to give some notes on. So in the morning, I am going to post a couple of examples from your practice problems that will be due tomorrow, uh, but it's also going to give you uh, a couple extra examples to do the last two problems of the practice problems that will also help you with the Desmos activity. So, and that will be posted in the morning. Uh, if you have any trouble, I am available. If you ever want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one about these things or any topic, just let me know. Uh, we can set up a time and I can do that. Otherwise, I will... Talk to you guys later.